Hey everyone and welcome back to another Unreal Tips and Tricks series. Today we'll be talking about the new GPU light mass plugin released in Unreal Engine 4.26 which brings a much faster and more accurate light baking solution to your project. Okay so let's start by explaining the basics of light mapping and why you would want to use it for your project. So light map is a way of generating textures that simulates light in your game environments. In this example, I have two cubes. So on the left, we have our cube set to static, meaning it will be receiving all the lighting baking information at this defined position. Now, if I move this cube, we can see that we lose that information as well as the shadow not being projected in real time. Now on the right, we have our cube set to movable, meaning it's completely dynamic. And if I move this, we can see that it does keep the light information and the shadow is completely dynamic, but we aren't getting as good as a result compared to the big lighting information and is higher for the GPU to render. Now we have a basic understanding of light maps, let's jump into the subject and go through the settings together. So the first step you need to do is go into the settings tab and in your plugins folder, and we're gonna be typing GPU and the first thing that you see here is GPU light mass. So make sure you enable that. It's going to ask you to restart. So let's just hold on to that for now. The next step we want to do is enable ray tracing. So let's go into our project settings and let's type in ray tracing and make sure that is enabled. And this will also prompt you by asking if the skin cache needs to be enabled so make sure those two are enabled then what we need to do is make sure it's set to direct text 12 so type in rhi and then what we want to do here is scroll down to the bottom here and make sure that you are set to direct text 12 to make the gpu light mass work now the last step is optional but is a good feature that allows you to visualize your light map baking in a progressive way this is done by using the virtual texturing feature so in our project settings, let's search for virtual texture and let's make sure that both virtual texture and virtual texture light map are enabled. This is going to enable a progressive rendering baking in the viewport, which I'll be demonstrating later on. Okay, so once those steps are done, let's restart our editor and see you very soon. Okay, so we are back in our project and my shaders are done compiling. So let's go into our build drop down menu and we can see that we have our new GPU light mass option appear. So as soon as we open this, we get a few options for the quality of our baking, which we'll cover shortly. But let's dock this panel next to our details panel for easier access. Let's start by the first option, which is unique to the GPU light mass and it's called the progress bar visualizer. So let's go ahead and demonstrate this by building our lights. We can immediately see our lighting doing its job and projecting progress bars onto the meshes. Now, the higher the light map of the mesh, the higher density of progress bar we'll have on our mesh reflecting our light map texel density. For example, my floor has a value of 2048 resolution meaning that I'll have much more lighting and shadow information at the cost of a longer baking. Now, if I stop the lighting and go to my floor mesh and decrease the value to something lower, like 512, and then bake our lighting again, we can immediately see the progress bar speeding up due to the lower density of my light map. So it's usually best to start with lower values to check any artifacts in your light map and then work your way up in terms of resolution to something that fits your needs. While being in the interactive mode, the baking will be slower due to the real-time feedback of the viewport and prevent GPU high memory consumption. So a good tip is to deactivate the real-time viewport by pressing Ctrl R on your keyboard to allocate all your GPU power to the light mass and speed up your render. The main advantage of GPU light mass is being able to pre-visualize your lighting data before baking. While being in interactive mode, 
I can adjust my directional lights and see the global illumination reacting depending on the angle of the lights. Same goes for my skylight, which I use to illuminate my scene. I can adjust my intensity and get a preview during the light baking process. Okay, now that we tested what the new GPU light baker can do, let's go over some settings together and get the best out of the tool. So our first option is the show progress bar that you can either enable or disable. Note that that requires the virtual texture support in the project settings to be enabled. Next mode is the baking mode, which allows you to choose between a full bake, which renders the full light map resolution for each object in the scene, or a bake what you see mode that renders only the objects that are in view. Then we have the denoiser, which as you can see on these renders, smoothes the noise produced by light map baking. This is a good way to keep your baking process fast without having to use very high sampling to compensate for the noise. Now for the global illumination settings, we have the number of GI samples. The higher values, the better results, but it will affect build time. We'll come back on this one shortly. Now for stationary light shadow samples, it allows you to control the sampling for better defined shadows if required on your scene. For irradiance caching, without going into too much technical details, it's a ray tracing based technique for computing global illumination on diffuse surfaces, computing indirect illumination bouncing off one diffuse object onto another. When enabling irradiance caching, you have the option to enable first bounce ray guiding. The basic idea is that it traces a few samples known as trial samples to get a general idea about how the lighting is in your scene. It fetches the brightest area of the scene to weigh the rest of the samples towards. This is the result with no irradiance caching or first way bounce guide where we can notice some dark areas, especially in these two spots. And now this is the result with the two enabled, we can see a clear improvement of my light baking, especially around the corners. Now, concerning the number of samples, the higher the value, the better light baking you will get at the cost of a higher baking time. If you want to experiment with these, know that it's best to keep your irradiance caching and first bounce ray guiding sampling at 25% of the GI sample. This is the result obtained with new values and we can notice some improvements on the light sampling between the default values and the new ones that we just entered. Notice how my corners of the wall are now smoother and show less artifacts. I hope you enjoyed this video about the new GPU light mass tool and see you very soon in the next tips and tricks.